Guys, consumer credit is a big topic right now. When things start to slow down, we've seen inflation go up. Best Buy announced that they had an 80 some percent increase in buy now, pay later. And some people have tried to tell me, no, it's their incentive. The point is they had to give those incentives. Yes, they, had. they had to give those incentives because they saw softness. Now we're going to watch a video here about household debt rockets higher as savings drop following busy holiday. Yeah. You know, Consumer spending and consumer sentiment is a, I believe, a future look at economy. Yeah, we have 3.7% unemployment still, which is low as hell. But we have a Fed who's getting aggressive on raising interest rates, which will slow the economy. That's their intention because they want to fight inflation. So let's watch this video from CNBC. And uh, Kristen, not going descri- to say her last name because I have no idea. Christina, something. Is- appear alive and well after spending a record-breaking $11.3 billion on Cyber Monday, not adjusted for inflation, but shoppers' money is being stretched in any possible way, with many taking on credit to pay for those goods, signs that maybe this cash crunch is here. By now, pay later revenue surged 88% from Black Friday through Cyber Monday compared to just a week ago, an installment method that doesn't cost you extra until you can't keep up with the payments. A firm is a pure play uh, on the buy now, pay later trend with shares jumping, what, almost uh, 7% right now, just over the last week or so. See, that would, the funny thing is, that would actually worry me because if it's a precursor to people not being able to pay, a firm's going to get hurt in the future. A firm's going to get hurt in the future. Apple's doing, I don't, I don't think Apple's going to get hurt, but Apple's doing the same thing. They're, they have four. Well, they could get hurt, but it might, but they may be able to absorb be it a lot. As much. Yeah. They'll be able to absorb firm, it a lot better than a firm. Live maybe. And die on this. Yeah. Apple made a hundred billion dollars in profit in the last 12 months. It's right, a lot different right. than a firm. Probably yeah, but they're doing buy now, pay later too. Four, four installments over, over four months on whatever you want to buy. Whatever? What, I mean, whatever your credit limit is. Wow. If you go okay. buy something for 20000 5000 a month. Wow. Yeah. All right. Maybe I'm going to buy a computer. Maybe. Just kidding. Also offering tools that let consumers break up purchases, but credit bureaus like Equifax, Experian have started to include okay? buy now, pay later purchases on <laughs> consumer credit reports. And that means delinquencies will hurt your credit scores. Other shoppers are turning to credit. Target CEO warning on a recent earnings call that many consumers this year have relied on borrowing. And that's driving household debt to grow at the fastest annual pace since the Great Recession, thanks to hefty increases in credit card usage and mortgage balances. So if Americans are sitting on all so- these what was that? I think the average person in the United States has debt over 93000 right now. So can I make a comment? That tells me nothing. <clears throat> like, I hear that. I don't think to myself, oh, that's bad. Debt over 93000 The highest debt ever? Yeah. Personal debt? We're also Why? the biggest economy ever. Mm. You can't yeah. compare it to its overall dollars. But let me ask you this. When you start putting, that's just one more um, piece of information to throw on the fire. At, see, that's how I look at it. The, I don't look at it as saying, oh, 93,000, that's See, terrible. but to me, that's too short-term oriented. Here's what I look at. Total consumer credit owned and securitized as a percentage of, gro- of GDP. And this is going back to 1950. It was under 5%, and it just keeps going up. It flatlined, went up, went up, went up. I, do you, does this look like some major pair? Like, to me, I get it. It's much higher than it was back in the 50s. That should be. Because we've gotten to be it more, I, I like to me, I thought this was going to be like this. Yeah. And it wasn't. We had that spike. The little spike right there. But it came. Wait, wait, when was that? Is that COVID? I COVID. Assume? I can't. Okay. Yeah, it's COVID 2020 and then back down. It's just like housing prices. And people are like, oh, housing crash is coming. Paul, I'm like, listen, I, I don't know if I'm necessarily buying into that mantra of because inflation will help. Inflation drives up a lot of these. Co- like, look what she said. We have a record 11.3 billion. Okay, well, what was it last year? What was it in 20? 20- how is it compared to inflation growth? How does it compare to GDP? Now, does that mean we're, we're good? No, no. I'm just sitting there saying that I don't want to look at the data and say, oh, 93000 per person. Okay, what does that mean? GDP per person is like $62,000. So it's 50% higher than that. What was it 10 years ago? What was it 20 years ago? What was it 30? That's what I want to understand. To me, it's about looking at a percentage of overall economic activity. That's what really matters to me. Look at the GDP per person. How much are they spending? What is this per person? Now, I like the fact that it's down here. Let's look at that other reset. Look at the recession here. It went up and then came back down. Now, what's a reasonable number, Mo? Oh, I don't know. I don't either. I don't know the number. <laughs> I haven't looked at the I economics. What, I don't know what it is. And what, what a normal number is in relation to GDP. 
I don't know. Now, it's not like the stock market GDP is like this, All right. but it has this like even number right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just seeing an uptrend here as the economy grows. Now, yeah. let me ask you this. You see that as inflation has gone up, now we're starting to see more spending on credit cards. Do you worry that people just keep spending and spending and spending because of this buy now, pay later stuff that wasn't necessarily around as easy in the past. Now it's on every website. And then defaults start at a really high rate. I, again, you're right. And that is not good. This is what concerns me more. The personal savings rates going back to 1960, before 1960. I mean, here we were at 10, 11%. And now we're at Jeez. two or 3%. But here's the deal though, Mo. What's the average since 2000? Five, if I had to guess. Yeah, five or six percent. Yeah. So I look at this saying, okay, why would we have a permanent shift down in savings rate? What would be the reason? Maybe people can't keep up with their bills, so they're coming out of their savings? Yeah, to me, that's more of the issue. Whenever you borrow money or spend more today versus saving, you're taking away from your future. And we've become so enamored with the short-term GDP number that it's all, and consumer spending accounts for 70% of GDP. That's why we watch consumer spending so much. That's why we watch consumer sentiment so much. These are the things that from a long-term perspective, I'm worried about. Because look, we saved a lot here. And when you save a lot, you're, you're, you're really giving yourself a much better future. We have a much better future here. Look at GDP growth of the last 40 years. This is savings. when I was born right here. What was that? But savings are down. But savings are down by half. Savings you would think would be up by half. If they're making more you know, money, making all these more things. Money, et cetera, but economy is growing. You should be up here instead of down here. So what does this mean for the long term? Oh. I don't know either. It's hard to say. I mean, it's a situation we haven't been in, so it's hard to say. Now, I will say this. When I couple this together, consumer spending, consumer debt, credit card debt hits all-time high of $930 billion. Let me look up on the, the St. Louis Fed and see delinquency rate on credit cards. Let's look at that. Let's look at the delinquency rate on credit cards going back to 1992. Okay. What does this tell you? Look at this. Very low. Yeah. This one sa- this article says credit card delinquency rates increased 0.16% from a prior quarter of 5.32. So, but for me, I look at this going, but we were already super low. Like we've been super low, but why could this be low? Well, the economy is growing very fast. And people it hasn't are, happened since 08. Yeah. And then and by here, by the way, so. here, people, um, employees had major, major negotiation power to get more money sure. to sit there. All, this is my point about it. If it were just one metric on the entire economy, I'm sure we can find four or five metrics. But when it comes to delinquency rate, it's awesome to sit there and say, hey, we're up $9, tri- $9 billion. It's like, well, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. I remember you know, back in the day, my father used to always tell me, Paul, there's half a million square feet of empty office space in this area. I'm like, but how many off square feet of office space is like, but it's half a million. I'm like, yeah, but if there's a billion square feet of office space, that's pretty effing good. If there's a million that sucks, I have to know in relation to what, what is it in relation to? So I just got this article from Tim. It says this is from August 23rd of 2022, a tsunami of shutoffs, 20 million U S homes are behind on their energy bills. 20,000, 20 million, 20 million, 20 million. This is wow. from Bloomberg. Now again, what's it usually? Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. That's the thing. Like 20 million is a lot. By the way, I'm not saying it's not a lot, but I'm saying I have to understand it in the context of history. And you'll see that on this channel a lot. So this makes sense to you. It's a way of explaining the world. You know, you sit there and say, um, prime example, Aaron Judge just signed a $40 million contract, right? Is that good? Well, yeah, it's awesome. However, Ronaldo just signed a $200 million contract a year in soccer to play for Saudi Arabia. So relatively, you're like, oh, well, and I'm not trying to sit there and say that, oh, poor guy is only making 40 million. No, everything is in relation to some sort of data point. And I'm the kind of investor who goes, okay, how does this pertain to history? When I look at real estate, I look at income to cost of, to buy a home. The higher the ratio of cost of the home to income, the harder it is to justify. The lower it is, the better it is to justify. Same thing with stock market to GDP ratio that I talk about all the time on our channel. I report it every single day in our community because to me, like Warren Buffett, the U.S. economy, as it grows, the companies within the U.S. economy should grow. So, 
at any given point, it's probably a pretty reliable metric for where we stand. That's why I look at that metric. Now, there's another metric that matters to me, profit margin. Corporate profit margin matters because during boom times, it's much higher. So to me, I look at that going, wow, we have record profit margins now. When it goes back to normal, it's going to exaggerate the valuation even more. Go ahead, Mo. So I don't have the number of what the average is, but this just says, this report also said that PG&E, this is a California company, Aaron Brockovich, you ever seen the movie? Isn't she the one that, uh, isn't PG, PG&E the one that went under? Uh, they came back in some form. Yeah, but uh, saw an over 40% jump in res- residential con- uh, customers behind on payments. See, that matters. Since February 2020. New Jersey Public Service Enterprise Group saw a boost of 30% who were late. So when those, those percentages make, like when I hear like a 30% increase, I go, whoa, because percentage increase is relation to something else. And this and, was right around that date, August of 2022. Okay. So same time. So guys, one of the things, not just talking about consumer debt, I want you to hear this on the channel and you'll see it. Don't just take any piece of information and say, this means this. We have to look at it in relation to the context of what we're looking at. I don't know what anything is just by saying, Paul, the average, did you know the average person is, you know, I remember a lawyer I met with, another reason why I think lawyers are all morons, but I met with a lawyer years ago and he said to me, Paul, the US economy is going, this was in 2011, the US economy is just going to suck. Why is that? Well, we don't manufacture like we used to. So that's what matters? Yes. Well, do you understand why we don't manufacture like we used to? Well, it's just not good. We have to make stuff. No, people make so much money that we have to outsource manufacturing so people can now get higher paying service jobs that are less hard on their body. Like to me, I'm looking at going, I would want to manufacture everything outside this country. Get everybody easier jobs that are better for the body in a long run outlook. So here's this lawyer who sits there and says that's a bad thing. And I sit there and say, no, that's a good thing. We make so much money in this country per person that we have to outsource our manufacturing and it allows people to do better themselves physically and mentally. So anyways, if you like this, and I hope you do, you like my way of explaining things, subscribe to the channel. We have a great offer right now on our software. It includes a ton of tools. It includes our, our community with thousands of people that talk every day. One month, no risk. Sign up, $1 a day. In one month, if you don't like it, email us your money back fully. I'm pretty confident you will not do that. Thanks very much for your time. There are three things that you absolutely need in order to be a successful investor. The proper mindset, the proper emotion, and the proper process. Which ones are the most important?